Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's get started with a new soap. So I, I made this soap the day after the Versus Battle Beanie Man and Bounty Killer. It was amazing. So I've got on my Jamaica t-shirt and my Irie One Love Memento from Montego Bay. Feeling really Jamaican today. I'm feeling very Jamaican. I've got some dried hibiscus flower petals also with some dried peony petals. I had a really beautiful bunch uh, here in the house. And this is not Jamaican, but it's the star of the show today. It's sheep milk yogurt. It's full fat, plain yogurt. And of course, I couldn't do soap without my extra dark Jamaican black castor oil. So can't wait to add that in. So I want to talk to you about safety. So when you're working with lye, it's important to consider a few things. Number one, you always need to wear goggles and gloves. I think you also need to wear a mask. You want to protect your skin, you want to protect your eyes and your nose and your mouth, right? Um, even though when the soap is mixed, the lye disappears, um, but make sure you cover your skin because when you're initially working with it, um, you want to take all the precautions. It's also why I'm wearing that undershirt <laughs> under my little crop top there because I don't want uh, my arms, I don't want my tummy exposed, but I want to have on my Jamaica t-shirt. So the first step, I want to measure out my lye, and it's important that you use a lye-safe container. I tend to use glass, um, this little bowl, because I make these small batches of soap. I also put the paper towel over just because I don't want any fumes to kind of come up. Um, it's not that bad, but they're flaky, and sometimes it releases like a little bit of powder into the air, and so I try to just protect myself from that as much as possible. The next step, you want to also get a lye-safe container because the reason you can't use any plastic container is because when you mix your lye into your water, and this is very important, you always have to mix your lye into your water. Um, you don't want to do it the other way around. But once that happens, it can get very, very hot up to maybe like 180 degrees. So this is a silk that I add to my soap sometimes. Some people, you know, if you're vegan, I guess you wouldn't want to add this because it does come from a silk worm. But basically it will add some creaminess to the bar. It'll also maybe give it a bit of a shinier appearance. So I like to experiment and try, you know, like with or without it, what happens. Now I'm adding sodium lactate. And sodium lactate is helpful to your soap. And I'm just adding about two teaspoons for my um, bar, my loaf here, because um, that's what the recipe calls for. You don't need to add too much. Now I'm covering my lye water and I'm getting ready to measure my oils. So the first oil that I'm adding, this is sweet almond oil. It's known for its really conditioning properties. And actually, I think there are about six different oils um, in this recipe. And just remember, you don't have to follow this recipe. You can, you know, create your own. But I actually just wanted to try this. So now here's some olive oil. I got this at Whole Foods. It's just the 365 brand. Um, <laughs> and as I was pouring it, I was really thinking about like, oh my gosh, maybe I should have made some like shrimp scampi with this olive oil um, instead of <laughs> this loaf of soap. Um, so you can kind of take this attitude on like when you're making your soap, like, you know, I want to use oils that I can actually eat. You know, some oils I think um, are still good, but they're not necessarily food grade um, oils. Now here's my coconut oil. You need coconut oil generally in your soap because it adds a cleansing property. You don't want to make soap that bubbles but does not clean. So you've got to have some coconut oil uh, in your recipe. And here's some sunflower seed oil. This is organic that I also picked up while I was at Whole Foods. So you can get your groceries and you can get your oils at the same time. 
Um, I wanted to try to use sunflower seed oil because I hear that it adds a lot of conditioning and moisturizing properties. In this soap, it's about 15%. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm really excited. And, you know, I was kind of like, I don't want to say all over the place this time, <laughs> but um, there's my plastic pitcher that I use for... Uh, to melt my oil. So I'm going to mix some of my Jamaican black castor oil here. And castor oil is great because, um, you know, it adds a creaminess and also a nice kind of bubbliness to your bar. And then here's some kokum butter. So I'm going to melt the castor oil and the kokum butter together. So in addition to uh, the sodium lactate that adds some hardness uh, to the bar and helps it release from the mold, um, I usually like to add some level of butters, like a uh, hard butter like kokum, cocoa butter, maybe shea butter, mango butter even, um, to really give the bar a bit more hardness. Okay, now I'm just going to measure out about an ounce of this yogurt. And yogurt is supposed to, you know, add some creaminess to the lather. And also you might see me dancing because I was replaying that whole Bounty Killer Beanie Man uh, sound clash. Um, I absolutely loved it. So if you see me doing a bop in the video, that is why. So now here's my oils. I want to pour in my castor oil and my kokum butter. So now I'm combining all my oils together. My kokum butter is mixed. Um, I'm still dancing. I'm still excited. <laughs> I wish that I could play the music for you in the background, but um, I know that we can't do that. But um, know that I was having a good time making this soap. So I'm popping my oils into the microwave. I'm going to heat them up to about 120 degrees because I want my lye and my oils to be about 120 degrees and that's when I will mix them together. And also I like to clean a little when I make my soap. So I'm putting my lye water into a bit of an ice bath because it's very hot in California and I really wanted it to uh, cool down a bit quicker. So now I'm just doing a little clean up here and I left this in just because I think it's a, you know, just a good point to note like when you're making soap sometimes and because I do this in my kitchen and I don't have the largest kitchen, I like to just sort of clean, um, you know, throw things away when I need to, wash things up when I need to because then when you get down to it um, and you're mixing your soap, you're you know, trying to texturize the soap tops, you know, whatever it is you want to do, sprinkle botanicals on it. Um, I don't want to have a, a big mess at the end of uh, my soaping. So yeah, here I am. I'm just putting some things away and I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell you the truth. Half my kitchen, I feel like, is taken um, up with soap supplies. <laughs> I think once you get started, it really becomes something that you will probably love to do and want to try lots of different things, so don't mind me. Um, now I've got some apricot kernel oil, and, and that oil I'm using to just disperse a bit of clay. So I added about, mm, I think, half a teaspoon of clay and um, I like clays too because it's just a little exfoliating, but I really like how they feel on the skin. Um, now, really check your temperatures before you start to mix. And actually, what I realized when I started to mix this was that I wanted to get my strainer because sometimes when you put things in your lye, like for example, such as the silk, uh, it may not fully, fully dissolve, and I don't want to have any like chunks or particles. Um, you know, in the soap. So I just strain it to be on the safe side. Now with my mixer, I'm giving it a bit of a stir. I'm giving it a couple of blasts and you can see just how quickly, um, you know, this batch has mixed together. 
and it's kind of it it was actually really nice because this was a very smooth creamy feeling batch and I've just gone to what they call trace and so now I want to add my clay I'm going to add my fragrance oil in which I have a little chamomile essential oil and a little uh, of another fragrance I think it's called scotch whiskey it's a very interesting I love the smell and I just like the hint of uh, chamomile and you notice now at this point I'm adding uh, my yogurt I'm going to whisk everything together and whisking is good because sometimes what happens is if you have a batch where the fragrance makes the batter very thick I think that happened in my last video um, you know or if you're working with like sugars or something that can just sort of accelerate you know the mix clumping or or kind of getting um, more solid if you will it's good just to give it a whisk. This one actually took a while to start to solidify, so this is why I'm giving it some uh, extra mixes right now. I think this would have actually been a really good mix too for another soap, like if you're working with a bunch of colors, because look how just fluid that is. I think you would have enough time to you know really add one two three four five <laughs> as many colors as as you wanted so you'll notice at this point I still have my goggles I still have my mask and my gloves on um, some people may choose to uh, remove their mask at this point I actually do in just a bit because now I've you know mixed my lye, I've mixed my oils together, and my place has gone to you know smelling like uh, this really wonderful fragrance. Um, but you do not want to take your gloves off yet. You do not want to take your goggles off yet. You don't do that until we're all done. All right. So now that I have removed my mask. Um, it was great because I had my door open because you always want to soap in a ventilated area, right? No mask. Um, so it was getting a little warm in there, but nevertheless, uh, safety's always first. As you can see, this batter really poured nicely. And, um, you know, this is one of the fun things that I really love about soap making. Um, I mean, I've been doing it for about, gosh, over a year now. But I still feel like a newbie sometimes, like when I work with different oils. And I love sort of just seeing like, okay, how is this one going to come out? What are the colors? Oh, here, you know, this is important. Give your soap, like if it's in a mold, give it a little shake. You want to just release uh, some of the air bubbles. And now, you know, as one of my friends, he does judge me. I spend all this time <laughs> wondering what am I going to do to the top of the soap and this is just a little spatula I think um, I got from Amazon and I just knew that I wanted to add these dried peonies and also the hibiscus petals to the soap um, you know like I said I think they were both really pretty and also I wish I had a picture my peonies that I got were super pretty um, my dad used to grow peonies when um, we lived in Iowa. Yeah, I lived in Iowa. So look, all my suburban uh, habits and my suburban nature is just coming out <laughs> in this soap making. And so, you know, you can really kind of take liberties with these botanicals. I just sprinkled them along one edge. You could sprinkle it all over the top. Some people like to incorporate the botanicals into the soap. And you, if you do that, you just want to be kind of careful because you don't want to put any like sticks in there and make it like too scratchy. If you're going to put botanicals in the soap, make sure that, you know, they have a purpose and make sure it's going to feel good on the skin. Now off topic, a couple of people have asked me, where did I get this beautiful pink KitchenAid from? And, um, you know, I think maybe I'll do a video uh, one day about some of the stuff that I have in my house. Um, I'm still dancing, yes. Uh, the music was still on. 
And so um, I got that uh, mixer from Crate and Barrel, and I wanted that particular pink color. And if you ever see in my house, I am like pink, white marble, you know, I have these like white marble salt and pepper shakers. I've even got like the bathroom set. Um, and at the end of the video, you're going to see this kind of cool thing. Um, some people might use it as sort of a cake turner, but it's this white marble. Um, I don't know what they actually call it, but I got it from Pottery Barn and I just use it to display some of my soaps. It's really pretty. Um, it kind of goes uh, with the theme of my apartment and, um, you know, everything kind of has to not really match, but it has to kind of fit in with this pastel pink or this, you know, white and gray marble. So now I'm just about done. Uh, not dancing, I'm still dancing, but I'm done with my soap. And if you notice, it's this really beautiful kind of yellow golden color, it smells great. Um, and I put my soap outside to cure, but it did go through a bit of a color transformation. Now it is kind of like this, um, I don't know what color this is. It's a brownish color, um, almost kind of reminds me a little bit of bread for some reason and so it's been a couple of days and as you can see it's really easy for me to um, pull the sides from the soap so now I know it's ready for um, me to take it out of the mold so you kind of have to play with it sometimes and just be gentle because even at this point the soap is still a little soft so you don't want to mess with it too much or pull it too hard because you could squish it and you don't want that. So at this point, I'm not wearing gloves because you know what? The saponification, right, which is the reaction that makes soap has already happened. I mean, if I wanted to cut a piece of this and wash my hands, you know, with it right at this moment, I could definitely do that. I'm not going to do that though just yet because like I said the soap is still a little soft and I'd like it to harden and so it will take about four weeks to cure um, but like I said you can you know use it but ideally you want it to cure for about four weeks now this was kind of funny I when I was cutting this I thought my soap looked like what is my favorite cake lemon cake I love lemon cake <laughs> and and I don't know the texture of it the feel of it it just really looked like a piece of lemon cake and I know I've heard people say you know oh my goodness sometimes I just feel like I want to eat your soap it looks like dessert like this literally looked like dessert so one thing to note is that I did not use any coloring uh, for this soap. I only used a bit of clay, but you know, sometimes that can color, but I really didn't use enough. And then also it was a white clay, so I don't think it would have too much bearing on the color, but I definitely think now uh, looking at it, it's probably the olive oil. Um, whenever I make a Castile bar, which is, you know, maybe 90% olive oil bar, they tend to come out in this kind of uh, brownish color. And olive oil was added at 40%. Another view of the soap. I love this lemon cake soap. Um, and I love my soap cutter. I did get this from uh, Workshop Heritage. I believe that's what they're called. Um, it's an Etsy store. And here is my little cake turner thing where I display my soaps <laughs> when people come over so that they can be so impressed with me. And I also have some lotion in those jars that I made. So I love the light fragrance um, of the chamomile of this soap. And actually you can see a few hours after I've cut it, uh, the color has started to even out and it is becoming this kind of more brownish, more tan color. So thanks for watching. If you like this, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week with a new video.